In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. On behalf of Abbot Douglas and the monks of St. John's Abbey, I welcome you to the Abbey Church on this Easter day. The day may yet be a bit murky, but as we absorb the risen Christ into our hearts, the day will brighten. Each day the Lord blesses us with an abundance of gifts, and we give thanks for those gifts and ask pardon for the times when we have failed to use them as we should. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who on this day through your only begotten Son have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may through the renewal brought by your Spirit rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever.
It has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Give thanks to the Lord for For his love endures forever. Let the family of Israel say, His love endures forever. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The Lord's right hand triumphed, his right hand raised me up. The Lord's right hand has triumphed, I shall not die. I shall live and recount his deeds, and recount his This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the work of the Lord, a marvel. the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Do you not know that a little yeast leavens all the dough? Clear out the old yeast, so that you may become a fresh batch of dough, inasmuch as you are unleavened. For our Paschal Lamb, Christ, has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast, not with the old yeast, 
the yeast of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. The word of the Lord. Christ our Paschal Lamb has been sacrificed. Let us then feast with joy in the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning, 
while it was still dark, and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, they have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial clothes there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial clothes there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial clothes, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. We are witnesses of all that Jesus did, and he commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. Topping the list of astonishing things that we celebrate at Easter is the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus. As believers, we confess that momentous occasion as the centerpiece of human history. As the scriptures say, once we were no people, but now we are the people of God. So dramatic and so decisive was that event that no life, least of all our own, can be the same once we've heard the the message, absorbed the message, and realized that we can never settle for being mere spectators in life. We can attend a sporting event, a concert, or a political speech, but none have the compelling message on which to build a life. Yet, that's what Easter is all about. How can Easter possibly transform us? What difference can Easter make in your life and mine? There's a hint of what's possible in Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. There he puts to us a rhetorical question that his first readers knew how to answer. Do you know that a little yeast leavens all the dough. Sadly, that's a biblical image that's lost on most of us today, simply because most of us have never seen yeast before. And that's despite the fact that we eat its results almost every day. Because of that, most of us have no idea what a few grains of yeast mixed with water can do to a measure of flour. It's not our fault that we get most of our bread from factories that spew out truckloads of loaves to be passed down the food chain. So we have no idea of what those few grains can accomplish. But if you'd like an idea Compare the unleavened wafer of bread we will receive in the Eucharist with a loaf of St. John's bread. Only then will you have a sense of what Paul is talking about. Absent the yeast in our hearts, the 
preaching of Jesus will fall short of what's truly possible within us. It will fail to stir us. But if we've absorbed that yeast, there are all sorts of possibilities for our lives. That's exactly what Peter began to realize for himself. Without God, little or nothing is possible. With God, Peter and you and I can accomplish the unbelievable. This past week, I was the reader at morning prayer in the monastery, and one passage grabbed my attention as none of the other six could do. It was a reflection on the death of Jesus, written by a writer, Denise Cottrell Boyce. Her focus was on what happened physically to Jesus as he began to die on the cross as his body began the process of shutting down, as his body slowly transformed from a living being into what she terms a carcass. As I prepared the text for public reading, I realized that this might not go down so well at 7.15 in the morning. And yet, that's exactly what happened at the crucifixion. It happened to Jesus until his breathing ceased with a sigh and his heart stopped beating. Jesus was dead. Or was he? Denise did not end her reflection with the last beat of the Sacred Heart of Jesus because something happened that was nothing short of miraculous. Just as his mother and the teenage disciple who stood at the feet of the cross were about to give up on Jesus completely, their hearts began to pick up on the heartbeat of Jesus. The redemptive act of Jesus on the cross had begun to transform the lives first of two then of a dozen, and eventually millions and millions of believers. One by one, the rhythm of the heartbeat of Jesus has passed from one witness to another, until it's at last it's found a home in our hearts as well. In the final lines of her reflection, Denise makes reference to the altar of repose, which features in the Holy Thursday liturgy. There, at the end of a procession from the main altar of the church, the priest places the remaining hosts in the tomb-like tabernacle, where they remain until they will nourish us at the Good Friday liturgy. Good Friday might have been the end of it all, but it wasn't. Nor is Lent the end of it all, because Lent is merely the entree to a transformation that can go on for a lifetime. Saint Benedict picks up on that theme when he urges his monks to make their lives a Lenten observance. And we do that in many ways, but above all, we do it whenever we celebrate the Eucharist. On the cross, Jesus offered up his very body and blood, and in the Eucharist, we become the tabernacles of the still vibrant heart of Jesus. As tabernacles, Denise would have us realize, we carry the life of Jesus to all whom we meet to all whom we serve, and to all whom we love. The Easter event, then, is not some passive spectator sport. Instead, it calls us to rise with the risen Lord, leavened by the yeast that is his message. We are the tabernacles that carry Jesus to a world 
that is desperate for transformation and for love. And if we find it astonishing that Peter could, in a few days, morph from skeptic to become a herald of God's word, imagine the role that the Lord has in mind for you and for me. This Easter, let us pray that we might bring to completion the wonderful work that the Lord has only just begun in us. Amen. My brothers and sisters, with all the church, let us profess our faith and trust in God as we say, I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins. Keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. has become the cornerstone. I saw water flowing from the temple, from its right hand side, hallelujah. And all to whom this water came were saved.
on this day made glorious above all others by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, let us pray for our needs and the needs of people everywhere. Let all the members of the Church, especially those newly initiated and received into the Church, will rejoice in God's surpassing power for good in the risen Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That leaders of nations and communities will rejoice in God's lasting peace in the risen Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick will rejoice in God's abundant healing in the risen Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we who celebrate the Paschal Feast will rejoice in God's loving kindness in the risen Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. That those who have died will rejoice in God's eternal salvation in the risen Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear Most merciful God, your loving plan of salvation finds its glorious fulfillment in the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ. Extend that saving power throughout our lives and our world this Easter day and every day, both now and forever. Amen. Our Easter Sunday collection, both in church and online, will go for the support of Central Minnesota Habitat for Humanity.
Let us pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, 
we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Patrick, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to sing. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. And in your Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son was pleased to confer on you 
the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. Amen. May he by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth the masses and it hallelujah. Hallelujah.